Good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining me for morning prayer this morning on the second Sunday of Trinity. This morning, we're actually at Bowl, one of the smaller churches in my group of churches. Bowl grew up on the banks of the River Trent, and the origins of its name give a fair indication of the kind of place it was. In the Doomsday Book, in 1086, it's called Bollum, a Latin word derived from the Greek bolos, meaning casting a fishing net. The Oxford Dictionary defines bowl as a stem or a trunk, a word that comes from the German bull, meaning a plank. Fishing, like the cultivation of osier reeds used for making wicker baskets, were important local occupations. In the immediate vicinity, the river formed two large loops, known respectively as bowl and Burton rounds. In the course of time, these narrow necks of land were steadily eroded by the scouring action of the strong tidal current, and in the spring of 1792, disastrous floods occurred, caused by a sudden thaw following a severe prolonged frost, as a result of which the river at last broke through and its old channel slowly silted up. Bolt Church is dedicated to St Martin of Tours. The original church was Norman, of which only the north wall of the chancel and the font, reckoned by experts to be one of the finest in the country, remain. The present church was begun in the 14th century, and the tower dates from about 1500s. Our opening prayer this morning. The whole universe is a gift of God. Everything here is a gift of God. We are the gifts of God to each other. We are all part of the procession of life. Out of nothingness we came through birth to life with the Spirit of God within us. From the life of God the universe unfolded into being with the Spirit of God within it. From the heart of God creation goes on till the end of time. With the Spirit of God within it and our spirit within it. I invite you to listen to or to join me as we sing our first hymn together, Yes, God is Good. Yes, God is good in earth and sky, from ocean depths and spreading wood, ten thousand voices seem to cry, God made us all and God is good. trackless way, and downward pours his golden flood. Night's sparkling walls all seem to say in accents clear that God is good. The joyful birds prolong the strain, their song with every spring renewed. The air we before God our wrongdoings in our confession this morning. Creator God, we confess that our creating often goes wrong. We're sometimes ignorant, we're sometimes careless, we're sometimes short-sighted and self-interested. Let us be aware of our failures in creation. 
let's pause to recall those things that we know we didn't get right and bring them before God. Forgive us, gracious God. We long to live in harmony with all that you have given us. May the Father of all mercies cleanse you from your sins and restore you in his image to the praise and glory of his name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. God is always the creator and recreator. Let's celebrate the recreation which is offered to us at this moment. Some people from around our parishes have been sending me some lovely photographs of the things that they've been doing um, uh, to improve their gardens during this lockdown. And as I invite you to join me in singing our next hymn or to listen to it, I invite you also to look at some of the beautiful images that I've been sent. And sing all the earth Gracious is the hand that tends you Love and care everywhere God will purpose send you Shooting star and sunset Shake the drama of creation Lightning flash and ruby Share a common derivation Dance and sing all the earth Gracious is the hand that tends you Love and care is illusion. Dance and sing all the earth. Gracious is the hand that tends you. Love and care everywhere. God and Papa send you. All that flies and swims and crawls displays an animation. None can emulate or change for each has its own station. Dance and sing all the earth. Gracious is the hand that tends you. Love and care everywhere God and purpose send you Brother, man and sister Woman born of dust and passion Praise the one who calls you friends And forms you in his fashion Dance and sing all the earth Gracious is the hand that tends you Love and care everywhere God and purpose send you Kiss of life and touch of death Suggests our imperfection Crib a womb and cross and to Cry out for resurrection Dance and sing all the earth Gracious is the hand that tends you Love and care everywhere God and Papa sends you Our collect for today Faithful Creator whose mercy never fails Deepen our faithfulness in you and to your living word, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our Bible reading is taken from the second set of readings for morning prayer, and it comes from the Gospel of St. Luke, chapter 14, beginning to read at verse 16. Jesus said to a man, Someone gave a great dinner and invited many. At the time for the dinner, he sent his slave to say to those who had been invited, Come, for everything is ready now. But they all alike began to make excuses. The first said to him, I've bought a piece of land and I must go and see it. Please accept my apologies. Another said, I bought five yoke of oxen and I'm going to try them out. Please accept my apologies. Another said, I've just been married and therefore I cannot come. So the slave returned and reported this to his master. Then the owner of the house became very angry and said to his slave, go out at once into the streets and the lanes of the town and bringing the poor, the crippled, the blind and the lame. And the slave said, sir, what you ordered has been done and there is still room. Then the master said to the slave, 
go out into the roads and lanes and compel people to come in so that my house may be filled. For I tell you, none of those who were invited will taste my dinner. Let's just pause for thought for a moment and let's ask God to be in our thoughts. Heavenly Father, we pray that you would lead us from where we are to where you would have us be. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. So, sometimes that parable is labelled the Great Feast. And rarely we can be mistaken if we think it's just about food. Of course, it's about God's provision. It's about that place that we are provided for in heaven with God. Let's just have a look at it a little bit closer. Of course, the people that Jesus was talking to were actually from the Jewish community. And the Jewish understanding of the great final feast was that everyone would be gathered together. And in actual fact, the great Leviathan that we hear about in the Old Testament would be part of the menu of that great banquet. And consequently, everybody, if you were Jewish, would have a place at that great table. Jesus is here extending this story to welcome more and more people in. But let's have a look at the people who refused and gave their apologies. The first person who gave, gave apology was because he had bought um, land, a great piece of land. I have bought a piece of land and I must go and see it, he says. Well, of course, uh, in Jewish eyes, land was extremely important. The land was the land of the forefathers. You inherited land. So consequently, that great financial transaction of land was all important. Well, I wonder... Perhaps there are some people who uh, might be watching this this morning who put off things, put off perhaps their own spiritual life and church life because of financial business. It might be that you are called to work on a Sunday. It might be that perhaps finance takes over and therefore prevents you getting closer to God. But let's have a look at the second. The second excuse I have bought five yoke of oxen and I'm going to try them out. Well, perhaps a clue here is in the going to try them out bit. Five yoke of oxen, what a novelty. Something new has come along, something new that actually is preventing this man from joining the great banquet and so gives his apology. Well, over this lockdown period, perhaps you've taken up something new and been very successful at it. But I hope that unlike this man in this story, it's not something that's actually preventing you from looking after your spiritual well-being and understanding God. This novelty, well, perhaps on a Sunday morning when many people are going to church, there are new things that are taken on. Perhaps it's joining a new football team, going and playing golf, whatever it is. Whatever it is that actually is fine, but becomes a distraction and prevents you from being part of the great banquet that God has for you. Let's have a look at the third excuse. The third excuse. I have recently been married and therefore I cannot come. Now, the uh, understanding at that time, and perhaps this man is referring to one line in Deuteronomy, which talks about being exempt from public worship if you have just been married because um, your duty was to your new spouse, to your family. And no doubt that's what he has in mind. So the first member has given his excuse from a financial point of view, the second from the novelty point of view, and the third is actually using scripture against what God wants. I've just been married, he says. Well, we all know that family will always come first. It will for me. Family is very important. But actually, it's good that we might be able to do things together. During this lockdown period, perhaps you might have experienced things and done things as a family that you've never done before. And that's great. And that's to be praised. And I'm sure um, God, God applauds you for doing that. But if things perhaps detract from what God has in store for you, the great feast, of course, in itself, a metaphor for God's provision, then perhaps we might be able to review, review where we stand with God. 
A final thought that I have about this is, Jesus chooses to use the analogy of a great feast. Now, I don't know if you've been to a great feast, but the last thing that happens in that feast is dull and boring. Um, it, it, there's fun there, there's shared jokes, and there's a great deal of happiness. The imagery that Jesus is using here is that heaven is a happy place. That actually it's something that we can join in with and, and celebrate and enjoy. Our church life and our spiritual life does not have to be dour, does not have to be full of sadness, doesn't have to be so serious that actually we miss God's humour in it. So today, as our thoughts have been about God's creation and our songs and hymns have been related to creation, let's just think about the created world around us. Think how marvellous it is. Think how we can celebrate it. And actually then think how we might be part of the great banquet and feast that God has for us. I'll leave you with those thoughts. Amen. Let's affirm our faith in the words of a special creation creed. We believe in the God who made every man and woman in God's image. We believe in the Christ who died to reconcile every human being to God and to restore our common humanity. We believe in the Holy Spirit that has always hovered over creation and ignites love's fires in our hearts. We believe in the community of faith that worships God, follows Jesus and lives by the Spirit. And we believe in the time when all things will be made new and all things will be brought together under Christ. Amen. Our prayers this morning are going to be led by Janice Sykes from the Church in Weekly. In these days of lockdown, we have all enjoyed the chance to stand and stare. We have seen spring unfold into summer. And in the birds, song and the miracles of nature, we have glimpsed the face of our Maker. We now come to offer our prayers of intercession, and especially today, to pray for our wonderful world. And so we pray. Creator God, we pray for our precious planet and all who share it with us. In recent days of the shutdown, the wildlife on land and sea has flourished and the air has become much cleaner. Show us, Lord, and world leaders internationally how to protect and to care for our creation. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our we pray for all those who have an unfair share of the natural wealth of our planet, especially those who struggle to obtain fresh water and those whose crops have failed. Help us, Lord, to support the government and those agencies like All We Can and Christian Aid who are working to provide access to water and food for all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, as we glory in the songs of the birds and the stunning scenery, our lovely woods and lanes and streams, the towering mountains and tumbling waterfalls, we think of those who are being shielded, those whose health is poor, those unable to share the walks that we enjoy. Help us to find ways, as have many local responders, to bring friendship and laughter, to deliver medicine and shopping to the homes of those whose lives are so limited. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Creator God, we pray that you will go with us in the week ahead. Open our eyes each day to the wonders of your glorious world and help us to cherish it. Bless us each one, whether we're at work, at home or at school. Help us to find ways of sharing with others. 
bless the sky that is above us, the earth that is beneath us, your image deep within us, and the days that lie before us. Help us, each one, to care for your creation, not just for ourselves, but for all who will follow us on. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer and the silent prayers of every heart. Amen. Continuing in prayer, I invite you to join with me in the words of the Lord's Prayer. So let's pray together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. I want to share the peace with you. Peace to you from God our Heavenly Father. Peace from his Son, Jesus Christ, who is our peace. Peace from the Holy Spirit, the giver of life. The peace of the Holy Trinity be always with you. Our final song this morning, I want you to enjoy joining in with All Things Bright and Beautiful. and beautiful, all creatures great and small, all things wise and wonderful, the Lord God made them all. Each little flower that opens, each little bird that sings, he made their glowing colours, he made their tiny Bright and beautiful, all creatures great and small, all things wise and wonderful, the Lord God made them all. The purple-headed mountain, the river running by, the sunset and the morning, that brightens up the sky, the cold wind in the winter, the pleasant summer sun, the ripe fruits in the garden, he made them every one. All things bright and beautiful, all creatures great and small, all things wise and wonderful, the Lord God made them all. He gave us eyes to see them, and lips that we might tell. How great is God Almighty, who has made all things well. All things bright and beautiful, all creatures great and small. And wonderful, the Lord God made them all. I want to thank you once again for joining me this morning for our morning prayer coming from Bold Church. Let's join in with our final prayer together. May the love of the Father enfold us, the wisdom of the Son enlighten us, the fire of the Spirit enflame us, and the blessing of God, the three in one, be upon us and abide with us, now and forever. Amen. <laughs>